Our next presenter is Rodrigo da Silva, Professor Rodrigo da Silva. Please. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to start by thanking this careful audience uh, and thank also my colleagues at Seoul National University for the opportunity to come, uh, especially my former professor, Professor Lim Eugene. Thanks for the opportunity to discuss my paper with you. Well, uh, my paper does not concern a, com com a comparative study between different economic regimes in East Asia as the majority of yours. Uh, it's more uh, uh, an analysis of a single economic regime and its recent evolution. It, in that, in, uh, by doing that, it dialogues a lot with uh, Professor Alvin Sow's uh, 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 paper, that, the one that he presented here. It's an analysis of a change, an impor I, what, what I see as an important change in the pattern of organization of China's economy in the recent, in the very recent times. So I will divide this paper into two parts. The first of it is uh, like a, a review of the recent uh, Chinese initiatives toward uh, uh, a more internationalized currency. And the second part is a case study of the effects of that that uh, set of political initiatives, uh, the, the impact it uh, uh, that I identified in a specific country, Argentina. Well, I am not an Argentinian, but I am used to teach Argentinian economy, and that's why I always focus in the evolution of macro variables of Argentina. And a couple of years ago, I started to uh, uh, take note of the evolution of the foreign exchange rate between the Argentinian peso and other currencies. And in the last year, I was rather intrigued by the uh, stability of its exchange rate because everything indicated, uh, according to my analysis of economic variables of Argentina, that the peso should be under severe devaluation, and it was not. So anything odd was happening, and I was determined to discover what. So the first time focus on China, and the second time, the second part of the, the paper focuses uh, in the effect of the evolution of China's economy in another economy. Uh, so the first part, as I told you, is a collection of uh, uh, observations concerning Chinese economy. The first, the first things I would like to point out are the possible reasons for pursue, for, for that ca can motivate any kind of, of uh, government in, uh, in a developing country to pursue a more internationalized currency. Why does China want to have a global E1 renminbi? Why? So I collected lots of specific reasons. Uh, the first one is the question uh, of uh, the cost of hedging uh, foreign operations, uh, especially not, uh, especially the immature economy, economies. They tend to uh, have uh, currencies that float significantly. This year, the Brazilian real devaluated a lot against the dollar. The Korean won also the Turkish lira. So most of uh, currencies issued by industrializing countries or recently, most recent, more recently industrialized countries, they float a lot. And if China could uh, firm all contracts in its own currency, the costs of hedging uh, these this same contracts would be eliminated. The second, uh, it's that, uh, the, the second reason I, I could uh, uh, mention is that uh, the, the, the simple fact of issuing a, issuing a global, glo global currency would be like an invitation for f Chinese, or in this case China, but any kind of uh, uh, developing country that starts globalizing its currency will encourage its financial institutions to be present abroad. And if a, a Chinese car assembler decides to make operations in Turkey, 
it may be helpful if this car assembler can count with a bank which already is a customer to deal with the same company. Maybe it will eliminate inefficiencies, maybe it will help uh, uh, to eliminate several costs of the function of the manufacturing economy, not only the financial one. Uh, the third uh, reason, the third, the third uh, element I would like to stress is that uh, the, the, the American monetary policy has a severe impact in all other eco economies. And uh, if a, a country reaches to be uh, ranked as one of the top exporters, and the, in the case of China, the first manufacturing nation in the world, it's obviously a lot affected by uh, the change of liquidity in American economy. So it would be perhaps help, helpful if they could uh, manage their liquidity domestically without having to counter exotic variables. Uh, fourth, uh, uh, China has uh, growingly counted with foreign, foreign direct investment denominated in domestic currency. And many, many Chinese assets are denominated in dollars. So there is a mismatch when the dollar devaluates against the renminbi or the country. So having both uh, liabilities and assets denominated in the same currency would be perhaps uh, helpful. And the, and the last reason I decided to include here uh, is that it's a very important re reason, I would say, is that the, f the acceptability of the yuan renminbi as a reserve currency, under the legal point of view, would give a tremendous tool to Chinese foreign policy. Because sometimes indebted country, countries, they can only go to the IMF to ask for a loan or maybe they go directly to the US government, as in the case of, let's see, uh, Mexican bankruptcy during Bill Clinton's administration. It was a government-government uh, deal. And the same with when Brazil had problems uh, in 1999. It was an IMF-Brazil uh, deal, but technically it was more than this. It was Bill Clinton and Cardoso talking about the problems of Brazil and trying to find a solution. So it's ex it can be expected that any kind of any any country that issues a global global uh, currency can exert this mandate. If if I, mean, I, I, I would not say I would not uh, uh, affirm here that the simple fact of issuing an international currency allows the country to do always so. But I remember the discussions on the question of uh, indebted countries in the early 80s, when Japan uh, deliberately decided to f facilitate the refin refinancing of many Asian, many Asian debits. Uh, I remember the classic work by Danny Roderick, uh, King Kong meets Godzilla. <laughs> about the, the, the quest toward imposing the, indebted, the, the, the kind of conditionings to offer indebted countries a salvation package. So maybe China would uh, benefit from the possibility of shaping a third country's uh, structure in the very moment when they are vulnerable and they need a, 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 a loan. Uh, it's, there is obvi obviously it's, possi it's obviously possible to extend this list, but uh, including the possibility of perhaps uh, relieving the necessity of adjusting the fiscal balance or the balance of payments in the short run, like the United States example shows. It's possible to have more flexibility in monetary and fiscal policy if a country has uh, the faculty of issuing a national and a global uh, currency, but it's not necessarily the case as possibly the case of contemporary Japan shows. So based on all these reasons, I would say that's uh, rather logical that a country that has achieved to be among the one or two biggest nations in all the possible criteria that we can find, uh, pr manufacturing production, uh, commercial insertion, uh, and even uh, participation in the flows of goods, capitals, whatever, 
it's it's uh, expectable that a country in that si under that situation would envisage the idea of pursuing pursuing a, a global currency. And indeed, I tried in this paper to collect some statements of of key politicians that uh, show us that it has been stated as a goal of policy by China. So I try to enumerate here the most, what I see as the most uh, interesting measures to enforce the internationalization of the RMB held since the, uh, let's see, the, 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 the end of the last decade. So in July uh, 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 2009, uh, the, the, I think that's the milestone in this process because uh, a collection of few Chinese cities were allowed to uh, denominate the trade in renminbi whenever the partner was from uh, the Asian group of nations uh, or Hong Kong or Macau. Uh, a little later, this scheme was expanded to include more provinces, and a little later, even more later, uh, the entire country was granted this opportunity. Then, uh, uh, well, these three measures are co concerned commerce and foreign direct investment. Uh, in the next page, I will analyze other kinds of uh, measures, but I would mention here also that uh, uh, the, the possibility of making uh, the foreign direct investment in yuan RMB has been simplified in that same period. Uh, and, and in this part, I will focus on the specific, uh, uh, specifically on finance and not on FDA and trade as in the other list. So the, uh, uh, in July uh, 2010, um, I, I, uh, there, there is a, an emblematic uh, measure of the Chinese government that is the that is uh, the, the, the they stimulated the possibility of issue of of uh, uh, they stimulated the issue the issuance of uh, renminbi denominated titles in Hong Kong, what is called the dim, dim sum the dim sum market, which reached a tremendous pop popularity, but then nowadays not so much. And then in October 2014, uh, it was very uh, publicized by the economic media, the, the so-called panda bonds, right? when a, 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 foreign, a foreign company uh, issued a, a, a title denominated in renminbi. Uh, I, then in 2015, um, much more recently, uh, the, the possibility of a collection of financial institutions to issue directly inside mainland China. And uh, also the possibility of uh, multilateral institutions to assess the domestic Chinese market and uh, absorb uh, this type of uh, bonds. So this is more, it is not uh, a list to, uh, um, that pretends uh, to uh, exhaust all this discussion. It's just a collection of uh, evidences that, that uh, intend to show that the government is moving toward a more and more internationalized renminbi. But there is a problem. There is a problem that uh, is enough to obstacle all these measures, the so-called Trifon Dilemma. It's very difficult for a country that pursues the issue of a, of a global currency to combine the necessities of a, 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 a adjusting the exchange rate for domestic purposes and the necessity of creating liquidity of in, in its currency abroad. It's very difficult for a country to uh, decide whenever the uh, exchange rate is overvaluated or undervaluated, because when it takes this decision, it should focus on domestic variables. And a country that 
aims to internationalize its currency, it should also look on the demand of its currency abroad. So oh, the American example showed us in a very different world economy that it was possible to, to deal with this problem by maintaining systematic uh, commercial deficits and uh, allowing this uh, commercial de deficits to canalize liquidity from America to, abroad, to other countries. But the problem is that China does not have commercial deficits and neither intends to have. So what, how to deal with this? How to try to have a more internationalized currency and without uh, creating a mechanism that allows the outflow of renminbi from mainland China to very distant countries? This is, act, this is actually a, a problem without a solution, a permanent solution, but you may deal with this problem in different ways. The hypothesis that I uh, defend in this paper is that the swap deals have been used by the Chinese government to allow the outflow of renminbi to other countries without disturbing the domestic exchange rate. I'm not saying that this worked or will work, but I'm saying that this has been a measure that I envisage to deal with this paradox. These swap deals are something very simple in financial terms. Uh, when, when a country has a swap, swap line with another one, it just is just allowed to deposit its own currency in the foreign central bank, and the foreign central bank allows its counterpart to cash to withdraw the equivalent in its own domestic money. So it's it's a kind of a, a, a money a currency exchange, but a kind of because it's common that in the contract, the the, the two countries in, involved uh, decide to charge uh, uh, interest rates in these contracts too. So it's a mixture of simple exchange and a low one, a real one. And the swap deals have been signed with, uh, by China with many counterparts. The first one was South Korea. But this is not a list that, uh, uh, well, it's difficult to find this information. At least I had some difficult in obtaining it. Because I go to a bank, a Popular Bank of China links, and sometimes the link does not exist, some, sometimes it's too old, but I try to make this list, and sometimes the country signed a deal, and then three years later signed again. So the list, in this case, I try not to include the country twice, but it's common that the country has signed more than once. But the question is not the, the size of this list, because the capital list would not be this one. It would be the list of countries which actually use the, the swap lines. This is very difficult. I designed a research to assess this, but uh, well, I received the, finance, the financing, but I will need one more year, one year and a half to make uh, an amplified research. But the interesting, thing, the interesting thing that I discovered, combining my interest for uh, Asian economy and my uh, daily life in South America as a professor of Argentinian economy, too. Uh, the, the, what I discovered of very significant is that Argentina did cash the, the, this swap line. And more than this, I included other variables in my paper, but I don't want to, to uh, include an exaggerated number of figures here because it's difficult to concentrate in so much information. But this is a critical one. It shows clearly that both the fiscal and the uh, external balances, not, not, let's be more precise, the current account and the budget deficit of Argentina have deteriorated clearly. 
The reasons are intricate. I should not uh, enter this theme now. But it's clearly it's clear that uh, both have deteriorated, and uh, more than deteriorated since 2012. Uh, the current account has been negative, has been negative all the years. And uh, I included in the paper, but I won't enter this in my presentation, there is an additional problem. Uh, Argentina faced a, a moratorium in the early 2000s, and this moratorium is yet unsolved. It has been almost fully negotiated, but not fully. And in the beginning of the uh, beginning of last year, uh, just finishing. Uh, in the beginning of last year, uh, there was a juridical controversy concerning this debit. A group of of, of uh, bondholders issued the Argentinian government in New York, and the judge allowed uh, the the imprisonment imprisonment of this uh, stock of uh, uh, an equivalent stock of Argentinian funds. So it enhanced the, the possibility of financial panic. So if you take a country that has a, a current account deficit, which is not a country that has a good relationship with foreign creditors, and it's subject to a judicial controversy with a New York judge, it's expectable that this country has, would face a devaluation in its, in its domestic currency. The, the prices of the raw materials it exports are falling. But more or less at the same time, more or less at the same time, uh, I think it was in, in, in the, the critical moment for the uh, speculative attack was about July last year. And exactly at this time, uh, Chinese uh, president visited Buenos Aires and declared to the press that China was committed to, to the maintenance of the, 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 the peso dollar exchange rate, that they were committed to a solution to the problem that they call, their, they call it the holdout question in the international, pre, pre, international press. And if we look at the evolution of uh, Argentine, Argentine foreign reserves, more, more or less at the same time, uh, uh, of this presidential visit, the reserves reached uh, the, the bottom of the valley, and then they started to recover. That's, that is what is probably, probably published by most uh, uh, financial newspapers uh, worldwide, if, if they deal with these statistics. But what it doesn't tell is that the share of Remy B in these reserves mounted from zero in September <laughs> to 21% in May. And I would tell you, although I cannot prove that today is about 30%, but Argent as Argent uh, Argentinian, Argentinian elections are approaching, the government decide to delay the, the, central, the central bank budget, which is a very interesting thing. But if we separate the two, because I, I, I would understand that as Argentina and China have uh, significant economic relations, trade relations, it is in, the, in some sense normal that uh, uh, China can offer cash to Argentina and to relieve a uh, punctual problem of speculation against its, its currency. But it's much more than this. China has given a loan to a country that belongs to the G20, although it's one of the smallest economies of the G20, is it belongs to the G20. And this country has cash this loan in renminbi and deposited it in renminbi in its central bank reserves and they did not say renminbi but they put currencies outside the imf basket but everybody knows that's renminbi and if you if we take the 
evolution without Remy B, it's declining. And with Remy B, it suddenly recovers. So I can only understand this as a deliberate measure of affirmation of the uh, Remy B, uh, the, the power of the Remy B, or the possibility of adding Remy B into foreign reserves, because we, we, we can make all theoretical speculations we want, but let's sometimes pretend we are from hard sciences and work as experimental scientists. The exchange rate did stabilize. They accumulated renminbi with all the uncertainties that uh, government that that is it's propensed to to not falsify but hide statistics because the Argentinian government is very difficult with statistics. Even with this the renminbi solved as a an antidote toward the exchange crisis. So it has, I think it has major consequences. If this is repeated by one, two, three countries, the size of Argentina no, not need to be much bigger than this. It may, I think it may have consequences, but I, the, I, the paper is not on these consequences. These consequences are already reason for speculation in our political economy literature for about <laughs> three decades, and it will certainly continue to be. So. That's what I wanted to bring you today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.